show. Let's now talk about what happened in Virginia where Robert E. Lee statue was removed. This massive six foot statue uh, was taken down and oh, the, the whining and the crying of Donald Trump uh, and all of the uh, Confederate lovers uh, continues. Uh, it was, of course, uh, uh, a great sight to see uh, again uh, taking this uh, 60, uh, this uh, 61 foot statue, folks, six stories tall, six stories tall. Um, and uh, it, uh, it, it finally came down. Uh, you have, of course, Virginia is one of those places where we've had lots of Confederate memorials all across the state, also places like Mississippi as well as um, Alabama. Now, on Tuesday, a number of Richmond residents, uh, they watched and cheered as the monument uh, was uh, taken down uh, from the former capital of the Confederacy. Now, what was so great about that? Mm, it wasn't just that it was taken down. It was taken down by a brother. Joining us right now uh, is Davon Henry. He's a CEO and founder of Team Henry Enterprises LLC. Glad to have you joining us here on Roland Martin Unfiltered. So I gotta ask you, uh, first of all, how was your construction company selected uh, to be the one to remove the Robert E. Lee uh, white uh, domestic terrorist statue? Hey Roland, how you doing, man? Thanks for having me. Um, Believe it or not, this process actually started over a year ago when all the unrest was happening in, in Richmond with the George Floyd murder. Um, the governor of Virginia decided that he wanted to take this, this, uh, this statue down that had been up for 130 years. And when he started calling folks and his staff started calling folks, there was no one in the vicinity, in the Richmond, Virginia metro area, including the Mid-Atlantic, that agreed that would want to do it. And so ultimately, um, someone knew within his circle, um, actually his chief of staff said, hey, Devon Henry has a construction company. How about you give him a call? And when others said no, I was the only one that said yes. And that's how the conversation and the process started. So, um, so, so just tell me, we've seen the photos circulating of, of you uh, hugging your mother. Uh, just tell us, um, you, know, what, what, you know, again, what was going through your mind uh, to be a black construction company owner and your company, the one taking down uh, that massive statue of this traitor to America and this white domestic terrorist? You know, I, I like all the words you're using to describe the, the, the statue, um, you know, my mother, who, who, you know, I grew up single mother, um, household, she, I, she's done a lot for me and my brothers. And um, she was there at the at the uh, at the event. And, you know, when she when I came down, she was screaming, hey, 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 hey. And I first thing I did was run over there and and, and give her a hug. I, I'll admit I'm a mama's boy. But like I said, this process has started for over a year in, in, the, in the planning process. And um, every time I started thinking about what we were doing and going through what we were needed to do, there's a quote by um, John Mitchell Jr. who was um, with the Black Planet. It's a, it was a newspaper here in Richmond back in that time. And he quoted, he, his quote was, um, a black, black folks put up this statue and when the time came, it would be a black man to take it down. And that quote resonated with me, stuck with me for over a year. And so when the time came, it was extremely emotional, extremely, um, it was, it's bigger than me. Like, like Nino Brown said in, in New Jack City, this is bigger than Devon Henry. There were so many people that um, have worked over decades to try to get this statue down. And I was just pleased and honored to be the person that was able to, to fulfill a lot of people's uh, work. Uh, tell us uh, how difficult the process was because you couldn't just take it down. Uh, you had to basically cut the head off. Yeah, we, we put together a, a team and we, we studied it. We understood exactly where we needed to to make the cuts to, to actually lift the statue off of the granite. It's, it's 60 feet in the air. The statue itself is 22 feet um, from top to bottom and it weighs about 24,000 pounds. So when you think about something that size in the air that hasn't been touched in over 130 years, you know, there's a lot of due diligence, a lot of planning that had to take place. 
Um, the reason why we cut it was just for a safety reason. When you're, when you're transporting something that size, um, you, you need to be within code and compliance and, and make sure that on the, on the roads that it's a, it can be safely transported. So just going through all that process of understanding how things were built back then, and which is miraculous that, that black folks were, were, were that um, that crafty to, to build something um, like that, that much, it's, it's, it's massive. And so just coming together with our team and, and putting together a solid plan that everyone agreed upon, um, it just really took a lot of time. But it, as you can see, um, was executed flawlessly. The thing that uh, is um, is interesting here when you look at um, uh, folks uh, who, who who fought to keep these things up, uh, and and I have to I'm constantly reminding these folks is, that is, if a robbery lease succeeded, they didn't want you to own a construction company. They didn't want me to be owning my own media company. In fact, they didn't want us working for ourselves. They wanted us uh, to be in bondage. Uh, and it's amazing how that just complete, it continues to get overlooked by these folks uh, who uh, celebrate and hail these individuals. Yeah, it, it's, you know, there's a lot of emotion on both sides. And, and, and you're amazed when you hear folks try to justify and try to defend the position of the Confederacy and, and what these statues were put up to, to actually do. I mean, these statues were put up years, years, decades after the Civil War, after these folks had already lost. So what are you putting these things up for? And where do you celebrate second place in America? <laughs> I, I, I've never seen it, don't understand it, but these folks were glorified, and to your point, they were held, you know, that they, the, the reason that they succeeded was because of their rights, their Southern rights. But we all know what the real deal was, and that was slavery. Um, explain this time capsule. Uh, that, were y'all told that that it was there? I mean, what, what, so what, I mean, what, what, what was the deal with that? Yeah. So part of the contract was also to to pull apart the pedestal, which you know weighs over a million pounds, and uh, try to disassemble it in a manner that it could be preserved for whatever they want to do with it at a later time. But there was some intel that. Uh, there was a celebration of a time capsule that was placed in the northeastern quadrant of the pedestal, and um, they asked us to go look for it. And so the, the, we, we spent the better part of a day yesterday and today um, trying to find that, that capsule, and um, we just came to the conclusion that it wasn't in the place that they said it was. Um, but, the you know, at the end of the day, it's it's— civil rights memorabilia but one of the things that folks were really uh, interested about was the supposedly a picture of abraham lincoln lying in a coffin uh, which was only supposed to be one of two pictures in the ever taken and that was supposed to be in this time capsule uh but uh again no one knew for sure there was a time capsule that was an assumption correct that was an assumption for 133 years ago. That <laughs> and, yes, like, and y'all couldn't find it. We looked. We ain't find it. <laughs> uh, questions from our panelists. Uh, first, uh, Amisha, uh, question for uh, Devon. Absolutely. Um, thank you. But as, as we continue going down this path and get a better understanding of, you know, just the size, I was kind of shocked by that, the size and the weight of what you had to take down. Um, getting to the root of this, and you talked about there being such emotion on both sides, and I agree with you there. Is there any level of fear that you have as someone who has now had his face in public, who has done this, your name's out here, of any type of retribution from the crazies, honestly, who are very upset that this monument of white supremacy actually came down? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. But, you know, the, this isn't our first rodeo. Uh, and, and quietly is kept. We, we did, we, this is our 22nd statue, Confederate statue that we've, we've removed. Wow. Um, some folks w don't want it to be as public. Some others do. Um, but we, the one that we just previously done before this was in Charlottesville. And everyone know about the Unite the Right um, 
uh, and the, the young lady who lost her life and, and just the, the commotion that was caused in that town. So we, we, this wasn't our first time around. We, we knew exactly how to handle uh, uh, a statue of this size and, and, and this stature. So when you talk about fear, um, when we first started this process a year ago, July 1 of 2020, my daughter's birthday, um, we took down the first Confederate statue in Richmond. And sometimes thereafter, someone leaked my name. We, we did it in a, in a way that we were trying to protect my family, um, my, the staff, our team, um, you know, because everybody's not willing to be in front of this thing, and, and they have some 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 serious and, and legitimate concerns about having their name out in public, doing this type of work. And so they leaked our they leaked my name, and then try to tie me to the mayor and all this nefarious stuff. Um, but ultimately, you know, when I do this work, uh, I'm, I'm wearing a bullet, bulletproof vest. Um, extremely um, aware of the surroundings, making sure that there's law enforcement around. But yeah, there was a, a, a really significant backlash um, from death threats to folks that in our area who said they would never do work with my construction company again. So, you know, we had to go through quite a bit of um, adversity, quite a bit of BS um, in, in doing this type of work. Uh, Michael. Hey, Devon. Uh, first of all, congratulations, brother, on this. This is this is fantastic what you're doing. And you've taken down 21 Confederate statues. That's right. Is that 21? OK, that's excellent work. Um, what is when we look at these Confederate statues, you, you are correct. These were built long after the Civil War ended. Uh, this one here was built in 1890. Um, what is what are people talking about putting in place of this Confederate statue, General Robert E. Lee, who, by the way, was against Confederate statues and against Confederate monuments, even those of him. He didn't think yeah. any of them should exist after the Civil War ended. Uh, yeah. Are people talking about putting something in its place to talk about this history? Because this history needs to be taught. Uh, yeah. One yeah. of the reasons why we're still dealing with the issues today is because we don't understand the history of the Civil War. Yeah, well, let me first acknowledge that that pen on, on your lapel. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That looks like a mighty nice pen, uh, blue fire. <laughs> but um, hey, yeah, go my the, friend. The the, um, the governor and the folks in in Virginia have established a commission that they're trying to reimagine because it wasn't just General Lee there. It was mm -hmm. Governor. Can you hear me? I'm sorry. So there was five other statues along Monument Road, is what they call it, Monument Avenue. And wow. five different Confederate um, um, statues. But there's also a statue of Arthur Ashe at the end of Monument Avenue now, which is the only statue that still stands on Monument Avenue now that General Lee is down. But to answer your question, there is a commission put together that's going to take us some time to study um, what do they want to do with that area, with the pedestal. And they call it the reimagining the Monument Avenue Commission. OK. All right. Thank you. So uh, first of all, Davon, uh, you, you, know, you need to cut that Sigma crap out. This is an alpha <laughs> show. So, you know, don't nobody want to be a Sigma at all. You know that. Uh, Kelly, what's your question for Davon? Um, no, <laughs> y'all are funny. Um, what uh, exactly, how exactly do you dispose of it? I'm just curious as how exactly you dispose of it. I heard that you, you know, you cut it up bits by bits, but do you do you reuse the concrete at all? Is there a way to, I don't know, like reuse it for um, a better purpose, such as a monument that would actually reflect America and not the, the traitors of America? Um, and to piggyback off of the sentiment of the commission to reimagine Monument Row, what, what would you like to see there? Hmm. Yeah, that's that's a lot. Um, so I guess the first part of your question was, um, can it be reused? And there there are some folks, if they had their way, they would melt those suckers down and do something else with it or just melt it down and be done with it. 
but I don't think anyone wants to to use that um, uh, the, the the bronze to to kind of honor anyone else. I think they just want it to be what it is. Um, but me personally, I don't I don't have a say in, in what whoever my client is, whether it's the city or whether it's the state or it's the university. They all have their own folks and, and decide, hey, we want to put this over here and we may, you know, do an auction. We may put it in a museum. We may, you know, do whatever. But it, that's ultimately up to, you know, those lo- those entities, uh, the client of what they want to do. You know, for me personally, um, I think my, my frat brother, uh, and Mighty Man of Sigma, he, he said, you know, there needs to be some sort of history marker. There needs to be some sort of, you know, you know, maybe a, a, um, a placard. But what, what, I, what I'll tell you is my company also built a memorial. So at the University of Virginia, they wanted to do something to acknowledge the, um, the uh, contribution of the enslaved labor at the university, which is a, a big step for a, a, a university like UVA. And we built uh, a, memor- a memorial and called the Memorial to Enslaved Labor. And it gives you a timeline of, you know, how slavery happened in that area. It also has the names of folks that were enslaved and worked at the university. So I think there's a way to kind of get rid of um, this, these, these bronze old statues and find a way to, to show what happened but also acknowledge the, the contribution of black folks to this country. Well, I'll say this here. I say melt the son of a bitch and turn it into uh, statues uh, of uh, black civil rights heroes from Virginia. That's how. That's what I say do with it. Uh, all right, uh, Davon, thanks a bunch. I'm sorry you had to uh, pledge that uh, uh, youth group. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you, every, it, you it, always... You always go in there. What? You, you Every, don't want to do that. Everybody, that everybody smoke. couldn't be alphas. But I'm, you I'm between you and Michael. I'm just shocked. Actually, Meek Sigma's under the age of fifty-five. <laughs> and you know my oh, chapter brother, Mason. Huh? My, you know my chapter brother, Jonathan Mason, uh, our, our previous president. Oh yeah, he know. And he ate you up too the last time he came um, on your show. Actually, you know he didn't. <laughs> you know he didn't. See, right now, even you know he would tell you, uh, brother, stop lying. No, no, no. It's all love. All brother. right, Davon, <laughs> thanks a bunch. Great job. Uh, great, great, uh, great job on the retreat of Robert E. Lee for a second time. Thanks a lot. You got it. Thank you. Thank you very much, folks. Hey, back to that my unfiltered video in just one moment. Seek.com was a black-owned company uh, founded by Mary Spiel. It's a virtual reality company where you can actually go there, look at their uh, virtual reality content. A couple of devices they actually have for sale that you might be interested in. First off, their VR headset allows for you to slide your phone right in and experience that virtual reality content uh, on their side of watching 360-degree video. Also, uh, there are 360-degree headphones, a tremendous base used for gaming, Bluetooth, phone calls, you name it. Uh, folks, you can get these two at Seek.com. Seek.com using this promo code RMVIP21, RMVIP21. Uh, you buy one or the other or even both. A portion of the proceeds come back to us here at Roland Martin Unfiltered. And so uh, we want you to check out Seek.com and give it a try.